Thank you for joining us for this edition of the BPS podcast series on the BPS podcast channel. Be sure to follow BPS on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. This podcast is brought to you by the Board of Pharmacy Specialties. Be sure to look for BPS on the web at www.bpsweb.org. Welcome to the Board of Pharmacy Specialties podcast channel. I'm Bill Ellis, and I have the privilege to serve as the BPS Executive Director. Our mission within BPS is to improve patient care by promoting the recognition and value of the specialized training knowledge and skills in pharmacy and the specialty board certification of pharmacists. Through this podcast series, we are going to feature conversations with a wide range of board certified pharmacists and other subject matter experts. We'll interview these leaders about how they ended up in their current position, their education, their training, their trials, tribulations, and their thought process and mindset that helped make them successful. Uh, We'll look for our guests to provide good advice on how to overcome challenges, both small and large, and help our listeners stand out in today's highly competitive healthcare marketplace. This will be a really good podcast to check out if you want some insight from pharmacists who are at the forefront of patient care. In addition to our conversations with thought leaders, we'll also talk with other BPS staff, our specialty council and board members to provide useful information on the BPS certification eligibility and application process, exam administration, as well as certification and recertification processes. As BPS continues this podcast series, our goals are to educate, inform, inspire, motivate, and hopefully we'll entertain a little bit along the way too. Uh, I'm pleased that our co-host for this series is Sam Johnson. Sam serves as the BPS Associate Executive Director and he's with us today. So welcome, Sam. Thank you, Bill. I'm very much looking forward to speaking with our guest today. I know our listening audience will gain some insight on the value of board certification to patients and health systems. I agree. Let's not keep our audience waiting. And why don't you introduce our guests and then we can get started. Sounds great. Today's guest is Captain Kara King, who is the Chief of Pharmacy Services for the Alaska Native Medical Center Department of Pharmacy. Alaska Native Medical Center is a level two trauma center with 173 beds and provides comprehensive medical services to Alaska Native and American Indian people living in the state, a vast 663,000 plus square miles. This is a special podcast as the Alaska Native Medical Center Department of Pharmacy was the recipient of our 2020 BPS Warren E. Weaver Richard P. Penna Award in the organization category. The Weaver Penn Award is given annually to an individual or organization who has advanced health quality and or patient care by promoting the recognition and value of specialized training, knowledge, and skills in pharmacy and the BPS Board Certification of Pharmacists. The Alaska Native Medical Center Department of Pharmacy has done a remarkable job of recognizing and promoting the value of BPS Board Certification. Captain King, we really thank you for joining us today. Hey, thank you all so much for having me. I'm really honored to be here and excited to join your podcast today. Captain King, I guess I'll jump in. Can you briefly describe the services provided by the pharmacy department at the Alaska Native Medical Center? Of course. Uh, The pharmacy department here at ANMC is quite robust. Uh, Just to take a step back a moment, We do have some unique challenges to delivering our healthcare here in Alaska versus most places in the lower 48. I'm from Missouri, for example, and practicing pharmacy in Missouri is quite different than Alaska. Uh, In Alaska, we do have remote locations off the road system that require aircraft, for example, as the only source of transportation. Um, So these areas have limited access to providers. And then there's also extreme weather variability So we have a lot going on at all times and um, what most of which really isn't in our control. So with that being said, our pharmacists have been instrumental in uh, overcoming these challenges through innovative programs. We provide a very comprehensive care and consultative services for our patients and for our healthcare providers throughout the state. Our clinical pharmacy services encompass both ambulatory and acute care with pharmacists who are integrated within multidisciplinary teams throughout our organization. 
We do have six ambulatory pharmacies, uh, which provide counseling to all of our patients for every prescription we dispense. We have village pharmacy services, which includes telepharmacy, and that helps to increase access to care in our limited healthcare areas. Uh, we have a transitions of care discharge pharmacy program, which encompasses three full-time uh, full pharmacists who are devoted to providing discharge counseling at the patient's bed bedside. That program focuses on adequate medication reconciliation, medication counseling, and also communication to the patient's home service unit where they're, where they're from and where they're returning once they leave a &MC. We also have a Medistat pharmacy program which provides seven day unit dose compliance packaging to our patients who live in residential treatment facilities, um, assisted living facilities, and those patients who just need extra care who are living independently at home. And we deliver those either once every two weeks or weekly. Additionally, we have an ambulatory surgery center pharmacy. It supports our ear, nose, and throat clinic, our ophthalmology clinic, as well as providing order verification on our surgery orders and our preparation of sterile compounding for our surgery center's operating room. Um, we also support the largest infusion center within the Indian Health Service with 18 infusion chairs. We serve an inpatient pediatric unit that's comprised of a 12-bed neonatal unit and a 19-bed pediatric unit with capacity for at least four um, PICU patients. We also have a 23-bed critical care unit. So on top of all of that, we also provide after-hour pharmaceutical care to three of our remote hospitals within the state and one detox facility. We got a lot going on. <laughs> wow, you said it well, Captain King. So about how many pharmacists does your Department of Pharmacy have on staff? We have 88 pharmacists on staff across all of the nine different pharmacies we have. And out of that 88, about what percentage would you say hold BPS board certification? On our last check, it was about 50%. So I believe 42% were BPS certified in at least one specialty. And our organization actually compromised almost 40% of the entire state's board certified pharmacists in seven different specialties. You know, it's interesting. Actually, we did a, a informal survey or a data analysis a few years ago, and Alaska actually has the highest percentage of board certified pharmacists out of any state in the country. We like to represent. <laughs> well, you're contributing to that for sure. Yes, sir. Absolutely. So, Captain King, what, what would you describe the role of BPS board certification for your pharmacy specialists in terms of their professional development? Well, as pharmacy practice advances to meet the evolving needs of uh, the patients we serve, and um, I think board certification remains the most rigorous credential to demonstrate competency for specialist practice, right? So it's a key component of professional self-regulation, really. It demonstrates the pharmacy profession's commitment to uphold our relationship with not only our patients, but honestly, by extension, the public. Um, this year in Gallup's annual survey of professionals that I think was released in January, pharmacists remained at the top, ranking the highest in honesty and ethics. So it's important for us to preserve their trust and our ability to optimize medication use in collaboration with our other healthcare team members. What do you see as the impact of board certification in terms of advancing patient care? Well, at least here at my organization, I'll give you a few examples. And this is by no means everyone's work. Um, there's a lot of good work going on by everyone, but here's just a few examples. Um, we have five board pharmacists, board certified pharmacists providing care for our after hours remote pharmacy service that we provide seven days a week. And that provides, uh, it, or ensures proactive response to those sites and also decreases our rural pharmacist fatigue of being on call in those remote locations. Uh, we also have a board certified oncology pharmacist who leads our infusion pharmacy 
And that increases access to care for our patients. They have benefited from receiving the majority of their oncology care here within Alaska instead of having to travel frequently down to Washington or to other places within the lower 48 to receive care. And so by doing that, it saves the organization, you know, millions of dollars, but it also increases that patient and family satisfaction as well to keep care close to home. Uh, we also have a board certified pharmacist aiding in the ongoing development of our pain management program. And with that, ANMC has been able to decrease opioid prescribing and that also has increased our patient satisfaction around pain, pain management. Um, we have board certified pharmacists in our critical care. Um, they, they have played key roles in the expansion of our critical care unit by six beds recently with a 10 bed step down unit. We also have three board, of, uh, board certified pharmacists in multiple specialties of ambulatory care, oncology, and pharmacotherapy who are actively contributing to our uh, palliative care project ECHO program, which is statewide. So those are just a few examples of how the BPS board certification has helped to advance and, and continue to do that um, for patient care here at ANMC. So Captain King, what words of advice or message would you have for other pharmacy organizations like yours that are looking to develop a more team-based approach to healthcare? Oh gosh, uh, that is a great question. Um, to achieve a team-based approach, um, I would say the transition requires very profound change in the culture and the organization of care, like in the nature of interacting among colleagues and with patients. Uh, in education and training, and in the ways in which staff and patients understand what their roles and responsibilities are within the organization. I think one of the first things is achieving buy-in uh, from other healthcare team members, from leadership. That's very important. We need their buy-in to foster that uh, adoption of the team-based philosophy throughout an organization. And then it's also important, I would say, to communicate the philosophy of a team-based approach widely. Um, that helps to remind folks to reinforce uh, your guiding principles that are associated with a team-based approach to healthcare. And then the next step, I would say, would be using that team-based approach to actually guide your decision-making. Um, so when you're discussing change in services or care delivery, you align those with your um, team-based philosophies that you've set forth. And then by doing so, you can incorporate uh, a team-based approach into your policies, into your procedures, um, incorporate it into your hiring process, which we've done, your training process, performance reviews. Um, and then lastly, I think it's just important to hire team members who fit within that culture of a team-based uh, care environment. And I think that that's, that's probably going to get you where you need to be if, if you were to do all of those things. Captain King, thank you for sharing your insights with us today. Um, they're really valuable. Congratulations on receiving the Weaver Penna Award. And most of all, thank you for all that you're doing to advance patient care. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today, but hopefully you could be able to come back and join us on a future podcast. And I'd echo Bill's thanks, Captain King. Please stay tuned to the BPS radio channel on SoundCloud for future podcasts, where we will feature conversations with a wide range of board certified pharmacists and other subject matter experts. Until next time, this is Sam Johnson and Bill Ellis wishing you, all of our listeners continued professional success.